wanted to do a more personalized reading for you, for you, for you, for you. So what I'll be doing this time is I will draw three, one, two, three, one, two, three, three different cards and each card will have its own crystal to match it. And then you, 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 you will get to decide which card you want to choose. It doesn't have to be based on the crystal. Um, it can just be whichever one calls to you, pulls you in. The crystals are just to help you decide which one may speak to you or just simply to differentiate one, two, and three from the other cards, okay? So let's go ahead and grab my deck and we'll do a little bit of shuffling real quick. Again, we're going to be using my favorite deck, Tarot. Mucha. And as usual, I will also read from the book itself because I really, really love the writings that they have in this guidebook. I think they're just very beautifully written and really um, express the meanings and symbolism in each card. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a bit of shuffling, okay? Feel free to close your eyes and Think about what messages you would like to be revealed to you. I want this tarot reading to focus on the close of this year and the start of the new year. New beginnings are always exciting and there definitely can be a lot of meaning in uh, this event, but it doesn't have to have a lot of meaning. I know that we put a lot of pressure on ourselves in the new year. We like to set a bunch of um, resolutions and goals, and we put we place too much expectation um, not only on ourselves but on the new year and as an idea. So while it is and can be a transformative time, I just want you to remember that it is simply another cycle and it could have as much or as little meaning to you as you would like. cards. Okay. One, two, and three. One, two, three. One, two, three. The first card. I'm going to assign amethyst to it. Okay. 
Card one, Amethyst. Card two, Unikite. Card two, Unikite. And card three, Black Moonstone. Okay. Card three, Black Moonstone. For card one, the head of Amethyst. High Priestess, you have arrived at the temple of the High Priestess, she who reveals secret knowledge to initiates who have earned that right. She is crowned by the waning moon, its silvery horns evoking the crown of Isis, great goddess of light and life. Ancient feminine mysteries are contained within the priestess's book of wisdom. The still waters behind her symbolize things that are hidden in the depths. The true initiate seeks far beneath mere surface comprehension. Her temple pillars are engraved with B and J for Boaz and Jashin, the qualities of duality, dark and light endings and beginnings, diffusion and creation. Wisdom lies between these extremes. You meet the priestess in the perfect moment between your past and your future. She is the eternal now. She will part the veils of illusion when you are ready to see. And our key ideas are wisdom, illuminated awareness, Feminine mysteries and deepening. So, perhaps in this new year, you can straddle the two dualities of dark and light. A lot of us have gone through some very difficult times uh, for more than the past year. And while a lot of those difficulties may not completely go away, um, we have learned over time to work through this new experience and going into the new year we can use that knowledge to to see the light of what lies ahead and look to a brighter future card two the stone was unikite for card two we have the seven of cups. The seven of cups. The seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The seven of cups. The seven of cups. A kaleidoscope of options revolves before you, each offering a different focus for your next step on life's journey. Love, riches, wisdom, worldly success, adventure, spiritual awakening, all these and more are at your fingertips, but how to choose? If all choices seem equally appealing, perhaps it is not time to choose. On the other hand, perhaps you need not choose just one cup. What is your ultimate vision of yourself? Is your spirit big enough to embrace a multitude of possibilities? And our key ideas are confusion, too many choices, an overabundance of possibilities, and a need for delay. So, going into the new year, often there are, are an abundance of possibilities. Uh, that's why we set far too many ambitious um, resolutions and goals and expectations for ourselves. So perhaps we need to remember that maybe we need to delay the choice. We don't need to choose it all at once. Or we do know the things that we want to do and we should choose very carefully and very conservatively. 
but only you know what is best for you and what you need to do, okay? So, it's the Seven of Cups. And our third card was the Black Moonstone. And we have the Eight of Cups. I pull a lot of cups when I read tarot. It doesn't matter how much or how long I shuffle my deck. I pull a lot of cups. <laughs> uh, so we have the Eight of Cups. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of Cups. Okay, the Eight of Cups. There are times when the soul puts forth a call so compelling that it must be followed. Even when all of life's cups are filled, when the situation seems perfectly positive, something better calls to you to strike out on a new path. This is not to be taken lightly. Such a calling is an extraordinary and rare as an eclipse. You know what feels right, even if the details are vague. Move forward with the knowledge that the light of understanding will reveal all in time. For now, trust your intuition. And our key ideas are pilgrimage, vocational calling, heeding your inner voice, choosing something higher than material success. So this is pretty straightforward. Um, Maybe if you chose this, you have a calling, uh, maybe it's very new to you, maybe it's been calling to you for quite some time, and this new year, this new chapter, this time of rebirth and change uh, could be the perfect push or encouragement that you need to set forth on making the decision to answer that calling. I like this card a lot. And that is the Eight of Cups. The Eight of Cups. Now, I'm going to quickly pull one random card, and that's going to apply to all of us, no matter what you chose, okay? Number 10, the wheel. With no beginning and no end, the wheel symbolizes the eternal cycles of change, the stages of life, the seasons of the year, the phases of the moon. Everything in our human experience is in a constant state of change. The windmill in the distance is a reminder that all of these changes are grist for the mill. What may seem like a loss now can turn into an unexpected advantage in time. Sorrowful events bring with them the gifts of wisdom and the depth of character, but change must be acknowledged in the happy times as well. No joy lasts forever. The sands of the hourglass mark the precious moments as they pass. The message of the wheel is to find your place in the circle of life, as well as in the timeless experience of eternity. And our key ideas are time, eternity, the temporal world, the end 
inevitability of change, fortune, and luck. We could not have pulled a better card to represent the new year and going into the new year. That is just beautiful. <laughs> so, remember what I said. The new year can have as much meaning as you would like it to, or as little meaning as you'd like it to, but it is just another turn of the wheel, and you made it, so good job. I'm so happy that you're here with us, and we have a lot to look forward to, okay? And we all 